when did you know you wanted to be in academia as a professor of law? The day I got the galleys back on this big empirical research project, um, Access to Justice um, and Unauthorized Practice Regulation, and I had worked really hard. It was kind of a, I lucked into this project because it came out of the work I was doing in the law school clinic. Um, the clinic, Poverty Law Clinic, did intake one morning a month because that's, you know, the, they didn't have anywhere close to enough lawyers to handle the volume of cases that came in. And in the family law unit, most of the cases were um, uncontested divorce cases. And so if you were a poor person in New Haven at that time and you didn't show up on that particular morning, you didn't get help with your divorce. And at that point, there were no do-it-yourself options like there are now with forms. And of course, there wasn't the internet, so nothing um, was available electronically. And you had to go through a lawyer who charged what in today's dollars would be over $1,000 for just filling out these mm -hmm. three forms and going to a five-minute hearing. And the lawyers didn't even fill out the forms. Their assistants did it. So it was just ludicrous. Well. What the office decided to do was to prepare instructions for people to help them prepare their own forms. And some of the people who were um, clients, potential clients of the office, we figured could do it by themselves if they had um, if they had this kit. Well, when we were preparing to distribute it, the local bar association found out and told them that if the office put out the kit, they would sue the office for what was called unauthorized practice of law, practicing law without a license. And the office was like, what is this doctrine of unauthorized practice? Is there any there there? And they asked me as a first year law student to uh, do some research on it. And I found that there was in fact some precedent at the time, prior cases that had said that because kits were acting in lieu of lawyers, they were involved in the practice of law. This seemed to me just so ludicrous. And it was so obvious that the lawyers were just interested only in their own economic livelihood. And that these clients um, who would be denied opportunities for divorce if they couldn't afford the $1,000 would be up the crick because they wouldn't be eligible for welfare payments because they were still theoretically married to somebody who had outside income. Um, they wouldn't be um, eligible for any other, um, any number of other benefits. And also some of them wanted to get remarried. So it just, um, it was so outrageous. So I spent the next couple of years working with my then um, partner, now husband, on an empirical research project on this topic. And we got lucky because the local women's organization, the office decided not to put out the kit, but a local Yale women's group, which had seen the same problem, and it was usually women who were left holding the bag, so to speak, with the kids and the absent spouse who needed the divorce. They decided to put out a kit, and the local bar association threatened to sue them, and they pretty much said, fine, take the coffee pot, you know, we don't care. And so the Bar Association didn't bother. So there were like 100 kit users that I could interview and we could also see what happened when they filed their papers. And to make a long law review article very short, we ended up finding that most of the people did not, that the, that the kit users didn't make any more errors than the lawyers. Mm -hmm. That most of them, most of the lawyer, I, we interviewed uh, clients of the lawyers who said that they didn't get any extra advice about anything else. That it was a pretty cut and dried um, operation, and and so we made this long argument with a lot of data um, to suggest that the bar should just let do-it-yourself divorce kits. Um, provide a, a useful um, uh, um, service for people who couldn't afford lawyers. And that law review article won the prizes for best student 
work at, at Yale, but what for me was more important is it made me realize I wanted to be an academic and write about these issues.